Hello and welcome to this GP feature overview of Purchase Order Generator. I am Devin Southall, a consultant for Software Solutions Group, a Microsoft Dynamics partner in Buffalo and Rochester, New York. Here we are in Microsoft Dynamics GP 2015 R2. If you have any GP version from 2013 on, you will own Purchase Order Generator. Here it is under Purchasing, Purchase Order Generator. When you first open the screen, what you notice at the top is a bunch of restrictions on how you can filter your suggested purchase orders. You can filter it by a range of item numbers, sites, buyer IDs, vendor IDs, item classes. The first option in the, in, in the middle is interesting. What you can do in Purchase Order Generator is set up a master site, so a site that can accumulate demand from various other sites and purchase it all to the master site something you'll see later in the item setup. In addition, you can exclude items without vendor IDs. Down in the bottom is values on how you want your purchase orders to be created. Do you want no buyer ID? Do you want a specific buyer ID such as yourself? Or do you want the buyer ID from the item site card to be used? For the purchase order date, you can enter it here. And then the promise date on these purchase orders. Do you want it to be the purchase order date? the purchase order date plus the vendor planning lead time or a specific date that you can enter here. In addition, what do you want the promise ship date offset to be? So let's suggest some purchase orders. Oops, let's put that back to none. All right, let's try it again. Here we go. So here you'll notice that I have a couple values ready to purchase and they're checked. I have a couple values with some errors in it. If I click on the line, and click the blue arrow, I can see that the error is that there's no vendor selected for this item. You will also notice that I have the same item listed twice, but if I expand my options down to see the additional fields, you will notice that they're for two different sites, the north and the warehouse sites. So let's drill in a little bit more on the item site card to see how these values were created and calculated. So here you will see on the item quantities maintenance card for the item at the north site that we have a primary vendor of advanced filled out. We don't have any on hand, we don't have any back ordered, nor do we have any on order. If we go to the planning, which is where the purchase order generator fields are set up, you can see that our order policy is use PO generator. We have an order point quantity of 20. We have an order up to level of 200. When you select PO Generator, you get this new field, a new screen. And here it is. On this screen, this is where you set your values. So right now we have it order method of independent. This is where you would set that master site if you wanted to. Our replenishment level is set to order point quantity, which is why it used the 20 here to suggest. It had we selected order up to level, it would be suggesting 200. And the last option is the vendor economic order quantity, which is actually set up on the vendor item card. Our vendor selection is set to site primary vendor, which is again why it used advanced over here. Other options could be vendor with lowest cost or vendor with the shortest lead time. As for our cost selection, how it suggested this cost over here, we have a couple options. The vendor last originating cost, item current cost, item standard cost, and a specific cost that you specify right here in a functional currency. The last checkboxes down here say what value should be included in the calculation. It's always going to look at the order quantity that you specified, but do you, and the quantity on hand, and the quantity on orders, but do you want other things included, such as allocations in the system, sales order back orders, or non-purchased purchase order requisitions? They're all checked. One thing I want to point out here is the mass update. You actually don't have to populate all these values one by one on every item. That's what the mass update's for. It allows you to set all the parameters here and mass create, mass set up your items for purchase order generator. You still would not have order point quantities filled in. Those would have to do one by one. But if you just want to order to what sales order demands you have, for example, the order points would be zero. All right. So now that we've seen that item, let's look at it for the warehouse and see how those values are a little different. So here at the warehouse site, notice our primary vendor is different, which is why we have a different venue vendor. 
We have 14 suggested. We have one on hand, one allocated, that's zero. We have four back ordered, so we need four. We have a planning quantity of 20, so that would be 24 because we have it set to purchase order to order point quantity. So it's 24, it's still suggesting 14, suggesting 14 because there are 10 on another purchase order. So that's where the 10 gets derived. One important thing to note at this point is it's looking at all the demand in the system. It is not looking at what the dates of these purchase orders are or what the dates of the sales orders are. If you wanted the system to look at dates, you're going to want to look at manufacturing MRP. Purchase order generator doesn't take dates into account. Just an important thing to pay attention to. All right, so now that we know how these numbers are calculated, let's create a PO. It's really straightforward. You have the screen up. You decide what you want. You can enter vendors if you want, even change these quantities, up them, lower them, and you press the generator purchase order. A report comes up and this report tells me what PO numbers it created. It's as simple as that. These POs are now sitting there in a new status, ready for you to print them and send them out to your vendor. I hope you have enjoyed our presentation on Purchase Order Generator. Thank you and have a nice day.